This is what I looked like the last time I was at Inc. at Lavasa. I don't think I've changed very much. I'm from Goa, beautiful place, the sun, the sand, the surf. And I, I grew up in the 70s. I was born in 1966. So I, was, I grew up in Goa in the 1970s. And Goa was much, much more unspoiled than it is today. But even so, I did see inequality when, when I was growing up. So let me tell you about an incident when I was about five or six years old. I had gone down to, that's my house at the back, uh, behind those trees in the background. And I'd gone to a little tea stall down there. Uh, I was, as I said, I was six years old. I had a 10 paise coin in class tightly in my fist and had gone down. Those are the days when you could actually, a six year old could go around the block without parents going crazy and you could get a good tea time treat for 10 paise. But anyway, I, when I went there, I saw a poor man, shall we say, maybe a beggar, who was being driven away very, very rudely, physically, being, being beaten away and told not to go. And suddenly I made that connection with this piece of metal that I had in my hand, allowing me to eat something and this person not having it and not getting it. And I felt it was very, very unfair right then. And, but I grew up and I did not know what to do about it. I love music very much. I did not know how to channel it. Being, growing up in India in the 70s, there was no Google. I did not know how to uh, go to pursue for higher studies or whatever. So I ended up becoming a doctor. And not only that, I became an obstetrician and gynecologist. And I delivered more babies than I can even remember. But every time I held a baby in my hand, I would think about the potential of that child. And I would say he or she is capable of doing anything if we can only give that opportunity and the encouragement. It's like the Louis Armstrong song, you know, he or she will know much more than I will ever know and who knows what, what could possibly happen. And again, I should think about the unfairness of it all. It's, all, it's a luck, luck of the draw. If you're born to a rich family, you're fine. If you're born to a poor family, not so. Why should it be like that? I got a chance to go to England in 1998 and I took it not because, not so much because I wanted to get the Royal College uh, membership or whatever you call those alphabet soups, but I also wanted to be part of the culture. So I learned as much as I could playing in orchestras, going to concerts, master classes, all sorts of things, and I had a wonderful time. Now cut to the last few years of, uh, of my living in the UK, I was now married with my wife, Chriselle. And I just made a stray remark to her in January of 2007, where I, I don't know where the idea came from. I just said to, the, to my wife, wouldn't it be lovely if we could give instruments to India's poor, disadvantaged people, the ones that you see running around the street and we sometimes do not even notice. What if we could give instruments to these kids and they could learn how to play them well? We would have orchestras all over the country. I just said it and I forgot about it. And that year, you know, there's a big festival going on even right, uh, just, it just finished actually, it's called the BBC Proms Festival at the Royal Albert Hall. That year, in 2007, there were two orchestras made up of exactly those kids I was talking about. These are the kids from uh, Soweto, uh, Johannesburg, Soweto Basket Ensemble, and they played mind-blowing music, you know, alongside uh, very professional musicians. And uh, the next one was uh, this, uh, this orchestra from Venezuela. It's a wonderful movement going on since the 1970s. And they played to such a high level. It was totally mind-blowing. And this is the first time I made the connection between music, which I love, and a social empowerment, which I'm passionate about as well. And I could see a happy marriage of the two. And then, honestly, I can't tell you what began to happen. Things just began to fall into place. I, by, na by now, I was, I, was, I was about nine years in the UK. I had quite a lot of friends in the music sector, for sure. But I began to make friends in the charity sector. And before you knew it, I was coming back to start something called Child's Play. Child's Play India Foundation. So basically, I chucked a, a good GP career. By then, I had switched from uh, Obs and Gaini to uh, general practice. I chucked a general practice career in Buckinghamshire to just come back with no safety net to Goa to start this organization. And basically, it's not only social empowerment. There are many other things that you get also from, from music. If you play an instrument or sing, you will definitely prevent the onset or delay the onset of, of Alzheimer's disease. So this, there are many benefits. Some of them already enumerated here. I won't go in through them. But there are also other benefits. There are civic benefits. Statistics from the United Kingdom show that if you play an instrument or sing, it doesn't have to be professionally, you are more likely to vote. You are less likely to uh, get on the wrong side of the law, whether it is uh, returning library books on time or having a criminal record or littering. You are more likely to be, to be uh, passionate about the environment. You are likely to be a better citizen because music has many extra musical benefits. 
When we play together, as you'll see my kids play very soon, we, what, are, what are we doing? We are actually a microcosm of society. We are all a democracy. No one is bigger than the other. Each one is just as important. Even if they have to play fewer notes, it doesn't matter. All of us are just as important. We learn teamwork. We learn discipline. We learn harmony. We learn how practice makes perfect and how hard work pays off. So these are huge lessons that sometimes we don't learn in the classroom. So these are the benefits I was just talking to you. There are so many other benefits that you, that you learn uh, from music which can, can help you. So these are basically things that we began, and this is our boy that you will see very soon. He was our, he's my poster boy. His name is Irfan, and he was the first child that we taught. On the 5th of January 2010, we had him among a small clutch of kids playing open strings. Okay, now this is the same boy, a little bigger. We now have a violin project, so we have in, to in total in Goa alone. I'm, ho I'm hoping that we can get bigger and go out all over the country, but we have over 60 kids learning violin, viola, cello, recorder, flute, clarinet, piano, and choir. I think that's quite something in the last few years. <laughs> and and if, you count the, and if you count the kids in the choir, that's another 40. So we've got over 100 kids uh, since the time that we had, uh, the, I, was, I was last setting. So these are just, I'll quickly run through uh, the, the pictures of our kids. This is our violin project at a place called Hamara School. This is our teacher, a very, very important teacher in the program, uh, Siana. This is the recorder project. They're performing at one of our concerts. The, these are, some of the girls have moved on to transverse flutes. You'll see them as well. Uh, we began a cello project, which I, is actually needs a lot of help, so we hope that, that we can strengthen that. So the cello project, the viola project, the violin project at another school called Auxilium School in Karanzale, in a village called Santa Cruz, and the, the children's choir. We've got an adult orchestra called uh, Kamarata Child's Play India, which I hope to turn professional someday by getting teachers who can also play in the orchestra as well as teach. And we'll have killed two birds with one stone by having done that. But this is one of our, after one of our concerts at a beautiful church in Santa Cruz. And this is our junior camarata. Now this, kid, this, is, this orchestra is made up of even bigger number of kids. So this is after one of those concerts, our choir, and this is our kids. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our kids to the stage. So we have the cellos here. This is our web cello teacher, Leo, Raghu, these are the viola kids that I teach myself, Cheryl and Jasmine. We have Alice Pabri who's come, especially from the United States, to be with us, and Akshada. We have the recorder kids. We have our real star, Anita, is over here. We have Shanol, one of our teachers, and our live wire teacher, Siana Fernandez. Big round of applause.
was the last song you heard is actually from here. It's from Goa. It's called Sobit Amcheng Goa. How beautiful is our Goa? It's a song that strikes a chord in every Goan heart with lyrics by the very famous Goan poet, Dr. Manohar Rai Sardesai. And we have a little surprise for you. Today happens to be the birthday of Irfan, our poster boy. And it, it's also the birthday of our visiting musician, Alice Pavri. Sing, please.